Some fairy tales are exciting, some make you laugh, and some are just mysterious. Not all of them have a happy ending. Here's one which is a bit sad, I suppose, and it's certainly mysterious. It's called The Lake Lady. This story takes place in Wales, a land of mountains. There are lakes there too, and long ago there lived in Wales a young man, the son of a widow. They kept sheep and cattle. One grey and gloomy day, when the clouds hung low, the young man drove the animals out to graze on the side of a mountain which stood beside a lake. Suddenly it seemed as if the sun had come out. The whole area became bright, but the clouds hadn't moved. All the light was coming from the lake, to be precise, from an island in the middle of the lake. The young man shaded his eyes and looked down. There on that island was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. She wore a golden dress and she sat combing her long golden hair. The young man knew that he had to attract her attention somehow. He was afraid that she might vanish before he had a chance to speak to her. He had nothing to offer her except the food he had brought with him. He took the hard bread and cheese from his pocket and he called out to the lady. For a moment he thought she hadn't heard him and then she stopped combing her hair and she stood and turned. Then she came towards him, gliding over the surface of the water. The young man ran down to the edge of the water. The golden lady of the lake came quite close to him and she looked more beautiful than ever. She stared at the bread and cheese that the young man held out to her but she shook her head. Your bread is too hard, too hard. With such bread I cannot be fed. And then she vanished. The young man was frantic. He ran up and down the shore, calling out to her, but she didn't return. When he got home, he told his mother what had happened. She didn't laugh at him. She believed him completely, because there had always been strange legends in that part of the country and nobody made fun of anyone who claimed to have seen something magical. Her son told her that the lady of the lake had refused the bread he offered her because it had been baked too hard, and he told her that if he didn't see that beautiful lady again, he would die. The next day, his mother gave him some bread that was baked for such a short time that it was still almost dough. This should please the lady of the lake, she told her son, and he drove the sheep and cattle off to the mountainside that morning in great excitement. Once again, he stared across the grey waters of the lake, waiting and hoping. And then, once again, it seemed that the sun shone as the beautiful lady in the gold dress appeared, her golden hair brightening up the whole mountainside. To the young man, she looked even lovelier than before. He ran to the side of the lake, holding out the half-baked bread and the cheese. He called out to her that he loved her very much and that if she didn't leave the lake and marry him, he would die. Once again, the lake lady glided silently towards him over the top of the water. She came close to him, but once again, she shook her head. Your bread is unbaked, unbaked. I cannot go with you. The young man begged her to stay, but she shook her head again and vanished. This time, the young man was desperate. He rushed home and told his mother what had happened. This time, she took the bellows and built up the fire and baked a loaf that was perfect, crisp and fresh. When he returned to the mountainside with his sheep and cattle, the young man went straight to the lake and stared across the water. A long time passed. There was no sudden brightness like the rising of the sun and no lovely lady. The water was dark and still. The day passed and it began to get dark. The young man realized that the lady of the lake just wasn't going to appear. Sadly, he rounded up his sheep and cattle. He turned and gave one last look back at the lake and he was amazed to see not the lady of the lake, but several black cows walking across the water towards the shore. They were sleek and lovely animals, but there was no one with them. Then, just as they reached the edge of the water, the sky was filled with a golden light and the Lady of the Lake appeared. 
The young man threw down his stick, took the bread and cheese and waded out towards her. She had never looked more lovely. He offered her the food and begged her again and again to come with him and be his wife. She looked at the bread and she looked at him. At last she smiled and told him that she would come with him. But she added there was one condition. After they were married, he would have to be very careful that he never touched her with anything made of iron. Because if she touched iron, she would have to return to the lake and he would never see her again. This seemed such a small thing and such an easy promise to keep that the young man laughed and agreed at once. A moment later, the lake lady vanished again. The young man was terribly frightened and wondered what he'd done. He thought he'd lost her again. He was desperate and he shouted that he would dive into the lake to find her. And he would have. But just as he was about to plunge into the water, she reappeared again. This time, she was not alone. Beside her was a tall and very dignified figure, an old man, her father. Young man, if you give me your word to always be kind and loving to my daughter, you may take her for your wife. She will bring with her a dowry, a gift of cows and sheep, as many of each as she can count without drawing her breath. But remember this, if you are ever unkind to her, or if you should ever touch her with anything of iron, she will leave you and return to the lake. She will bring her dowry with her. You will never see her again. This made the young man even happier. He agreed at once to all that the old man had said. The lake lady's father joined their hands together and pronounced them man and wife. Then came the dowry, the gift that all brides gave to their husbands in those days. The old man had said that his daughter would bring as many sheep and cattle as she could count in one breath. And so she began to count, first for the sheep. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. She counted up to 15 before she ran out of breath. And at once, 15 fine, fat sheep came up out of the water. Then she counted for the cattle, and soon 14 fat black cows were standing with the sheep and one magnificent bull, who was black with a white head. The young man and his bride said goodbye to the old man and led their animals home. Over the years that followed, the fairy cows produced the finest milk that anyone had seen. The fairy sheep produced the finest wool that anyone had seen. And the young man and his wife were the happiest couple anyone had ever seen. In time, they had three sons who grew up to be clever and handsome. And all the while, their father took care never to allow any bit of iron that he might be holding to touch his wife, because he knew what would happen if it did. There was one extraordinary thing that happened as the years passed, or rather, one extraordinary thing that didn't happen. For although the young man was no longer young and became old and bent, his wife didn't change at all. She stayed as young and as beautiful as she had always been. But the three sons helped their father with all the work on the farm, and it grew and prospered as the sheep and cattle became great flocks and herds. One day, the husband and wife decided to go to a big cattle fair and to leave their three sons to look after the farm while they were away. They needed two ponies to carry them to the fair. So they went up onto the mountain beside the lake where they had first met to catch the ponies. The wife, who was still like a young girl, ran easily about and soon caught a pony. She held onto its mane and she called to her husband to throw her a halter so that she would be able to hold the pony properly. Now he was old and not as quick-witted as he used to be. And instead of throwing a halter, he threw a bridle. 
Now a bridle, as you know, has a bit of iron attached to it, which fits into the horse's mouth. And this bit of iron touched his wife's hand. He realized at once what he'd done. He groaned and reached out his hand, but it was too late. She let go of the pony and gave him a sad look. The sky grew dark and the wind sprang up. As the storm grew, the lady called to her diary, her gift of cattle and sheep. And when she called, they came to her from the fields and from their stalls. When they had all come to the lake, the lady and all her diary vanished into the water. The old man went back to the farm and wept. His three sons had never heard their mother's story before, although of course they knew there was something magical about her because she had never changed over the years. They comforted their father. Don't worry, father, they said. Mother is still with us. She'll still be watching over us. And hoping to see her again, the three sons went every night to the lake and watched and waited for her return. But the waters remained still and dark. Then one night, as they stared at the water, it happened. Just as their father had seen for the first time, the beautiful lady rose up out of the water. She told them that she still thought of them and loved them as much as ever, and that she had one last gift for them, the magical gift of healing. If they listened to her, they would become the most famous doctors in the whole of Wales. And because she was their mother, and because they knew that to make people healthy was a good and wonderful thing, they listened. She told them where the plants grew that would cure people of sickness, and the names of the plants. There was one called Eyebright that would cure people who couldn't see well. There was another called Feverfew that could cure fevers. And there was another called Woundwort that would heal all wounds. She taught her sons how to prepare these herbs and what magical words to say while they were making their medicines. They listened well and did what she told them. And the three sons became the wisest and most famous of all the doctors in Wales. And the secrets they learned, they taught to others, who taught them to others. So that for many hundreds of years afterwards, people were thankful for the secrets they had learned from the beautiful Lady of the Lake.